Father, we are grateful that you are holding us in your arms of love. Father, this morning, once again, we thank you for your many blessings, and we thank you that we can come into this sanctuary and that we can lift our voices up to you. And we pray that they were pleasing and honoring to you, Father. And Lord, we pray that now that we've raised our voices to you, we ask that you would speak to us from your word. Lord, open up our hearts to receive. And Lord, we just ask that today you would move in a very real and powerful way in our lives. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it. And together we all would say, Amen. You may be seated this morning. Thank you, worship team. Praise the Lord. Well, this week at Vacation Bible School, the children and some of us adults followed the adventures of Skeeter, Lewis, and Bandit. And these three went on this adventure to find some great things, and God did some really neat things in their lives. And so what I want to do is just for a few minutes, and, and I know you guys won't believe me, this will be very brief, uh, but let me remind you, the Apostle Peter taught us that f- with God, one day is like a thousand years. And <laughs> so this will be brief. <laughs> you just got it. Uh, it. No, it will. But I was, this week, it was kind of funny. Wednesday night and Thursday night, as I was coming to vacation Bible school, I ran into two detours. And that's kind of weird out west here for us. But, you know, you just got to kind of go the long way around. But you end up in the spot that you're, you're aiming for, right? Well, Skeeter, Lewis, and Bandit, they kept running into detours on their little adventure. And it got me thinking about another young man in the Bible that I want to share uh, five, I'm sorry, six points with you that he ran into some detours. He started off with a dream. He had to go through some detours. But they ended up in destiny, and it's Joseph. And we're going to look at him in just a few minutes. But before we do, I want to play you a clip from one of the videos that the children uh, watched. And this is from Thursday's clip. Sometimes we seem lost at sea, adrift. We feel abandoned and worthless. Have I come all this way for nothing? Has God picked the wrong person? These are the times when no compass can tell you where to go. And just remember, there is a plan at work in your life. Jesus knows your purpose. And if you listen to him, you won't find yourself looking for treasure in the wrong place. You can cut off there. That's that's good. That are some powerful, powerful words that the captain told those kids there. There's sometimes we find ourselves on a course that, that no compass can give us direction. Sometimes we can find ourselves on this course to, to this destiny that we feel we're going towards, and we don't see how we can get to the end of it, right? You ever feel that way? We all do it sometimes, right? Well, this is what these kids went through, and this is what Joseph went through. So if you have your Bibles... I'm going to cover about 14 years in just about 15 minutes. So I'm going to start in Genesis 37. We're going to kind of really focus on chapter 40 and 41. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a real fast overview on this character. Now, if you're not a a regular tender of Lighthouse, we're a teaching church. And what that basically means is we systematically go through the Bible. In fact, on Sunday mornings, we're in the New Testament Gospel of Luke. But we're taking a little detour because of Vacation Bible School. And uh, so we're not going to get real deep, deep, deep into this, but I've got some important points here that I think will help you and I when we find ourselves in a detour of life. I also would like to let you know that uh, if you don't have a Bible and would like to go along with us, we do have some at the front and the back of the church that you're welcome to. So in Genesis chapter 37, we meet Joseph, the boy with a dream. And I'm going to read a couple of verses here. Let's read Genesis 37, verses 5 through 7. It says, now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. And he said to them, please hear this dream that I have dreamed. And now he, he makes the mistake of telling his brothers this dream. He says, there we all were, binding sheaves out in the field. And behold, my sheave, it arose, and it stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves all stood around it and bowed down to my sheep. Now, how many of you know that's probably not a dream you should tell an older brother? <laughs> right? I mean, no wonder they didn't like this kid. Well, now, turn fast forward to chapter 41. 
his dream we saw was that he would be the leader of his clan. Okay, that was very important in, in ancient Israel. The family clans were very important, the patriarch, all that system. And here his dream was that he would be the patriarch. This is kind of weird because he wasn't the oldest son, right? And so uh, he was on his way to being the patriarch. He had this fancy coat of many colors that his dad had given him, and his dad favored him and doing these things like that. And he thought that was his goal. But look what God's purpose for him was. Chapter 41 verses 40 and 41 says this now this is 13 years in the future of his dream that he had in chapter 37 look at God's fulfillment it is uh, Pharaoh is speaking here and he tells Joseph you shall be ruler over my house and over all the people will be ruled according to your word only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you and Pharaoh said to Joseph see I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Friends, the first point here that I want to, to bring out to you is uh, your dream is never as big as God's destiny for you. Okay? His dream, and it was a good dream, was to be the leader of his clan. And that was something to, to look forward to. You know, his, his dad was very wealthy. There's a lot of people, animals involved. And so that was a good goal. That was a good, a good dream. But God's dream was not that, that you ruled your family. I'm going to put you in charge of the world. That's a big dream, right? And so, friend, your dream is never as big as God's plan for you, right? And here's the other point, and uh, uh, that is that no one can stop God's dream for you, God's goal for you, except you. Look at chapter 37 again. Let's go back there. And I'm just going to jump to some of these as I tell the story. Joseph had this dream. And he told his brothers. Look how his brothers reacted. Verses 19 and 20 of verse 37. The, the boys, the brothers are out tending their sheep. Dad sends Joseph, who actually was younger, but he's in charge, sends them out to check on him. And look what they say in verse 19. They said to one another, look, this dreamer is coming. Come therefore and let us now kill him and throw him into some pit. And we shall say that a wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what will become of his dreams. Friends, that point again is no one can stop God's plan for you except you. You can refuse God's destiny for you, but other people can't stop. It. They Notice if you would here that um, we learn that, that, that being in God's plan doesn't guarantee everything will be rosy and not everyone will agree with you. Not everyone will be as excited about God's plan for you as you are, but no one can stop you except you. Does that make sense? Look here, we're still in the, the same chapter. Look at verse 28. Just drop down a little bit. The boys, they decide not to kill their brother, but they decide we'll make some money off him, so they're going to sell him to some, some slave traders going to Egypt. Look at verse 28. It says, uh, Then the Midianite traders passed by, so the brothers pulled Joseph up out of the pit, and they sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. Here's the point I want to make here. The point I want to make here is being in God's will doesn't guarantee you an easy or trouble-free way. Boy, at this point, you, you would think he would be saying, but God, I thought I was in your, your plan. I thought I was in your will, right? How many of you know sometimes being obedient to God can be a little painful, right? We're not guaranteed. We're not immune from troubles just because we are Christian. As we move forward in his life, he gets taken down to Egypt. Chapter 39, I just want to, I'll summarize the whole chapter there. The whole chapter there is, is, is this, that uh, uh, our attitudes are a little thing, but they make a big difference. Our attitude's a small thing, but it makes a big difference. We never see in all the chapters of Joseph, he never complains. Nothing negative is ever written about him. Isn't that amazing? Now he's been thrown in the pit by his brothers. Now he's been sold to to slave traders and now he's in Egypt this foreign pagan land and look what happens in verse 2 the Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man well this makes me think well if everything is going wrong sometimes I doubt that God is with me and here he was taken by force by his brothers we're told in a few chapters later that he begged his brothers not to sell him he cried and moaned, and they, they, they just turned their back on him, sold him, okay? Now he's, 
he, he's in this situation. He's in a foreign land. He can't speak the language. He doesn't know the culture. He's afraid. He's alone. But God says he was successful. Boy, if that's success, I'm not sure I want it. Right? So why was he successful? Because he was where God wanted him to be for the purpose that God wanted him to be there. Just like Moses, just like the Apostle Paul, just like you and I, God has, is molding and making us, and everything that we go through doesn't surprise God. Now, we may create our own detours at times, but God is using those events and those things in our life to mold us and to form us into the men and women of God He wants us to be. Right? And so, Harry was successful, even though by the world standard, he was a failure. He was a flop. Chapter 40. What happens, a familiar story in chapter 39 is a, a wealthy man who was very high up in the government by the name of Potiphar uh, bought Joseph and through Joseph's obedience to God and, and his, his moral character and all this, he becomes the leader of Potiphar's house and Potiphar had a beautiful wife and she tried to seduce him and he, he didn't um, fall for her advances and so he got in trouble for that and she accused him of rape and of course he was innocent but he got thrown in jail for that. And uh, so now we're in, in the jail. This is a couple years later, verse 40, uh, chapter 40, excuse me. Uh, here's where I really want to focus. I got five points here, and this is, this is really the, the, the sermon. Uh, notice, if you would, please, in verse 6. It says, And Joseph came in to them in the morning and looked at them and saw that they were sad. Remember, Joseph is in jail. Now, once again, he because of his character, because of God's blessing, he's now in charge of the jail. <laughs> That's pretty cool, right? Well, the king, the Pharaoh, he's got a butler and, and a cook that get in trouble. We believe they were trying to assassinate the king. Well, they get thrown in jail. Well, here, Joseph is now in charge of these guys. Here's the first point, and friends, this is, this is a biggie that a lot of people don't understand. And this is a key for you and I being successful. And that is that Joseph took a personal interest in other people. These guys are in jail, but he saw they were sad. And he took interest in them and, and approached them to talk to them. You know, one of the, I think, forgotten elements of Christianity is we're to be servants to, the, to, to others. The greatest lesson Jesus taught the disciples was the night before he died, and that was he washed their feet. We like serving communion, but we're not much on the foot washing, are we? He took an interest in these guys. We need to do our part to lift others up. Then God will lift us up. Amen? Drop down to verses 22 and 23. I'm still in chapter 40. He interpreted these guys as dreams. They each had a dream and one, it was a good thing, one it was a bad thing. Verse 22 says, but he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Here's our second point to ponder. Our disappointments can be God's appointments. Here he was innocent. Here he was in jail. Here he was doing the butler a favor and interpreted the dream. And he asked the butler, remember me when you get out of here. What did the butler do? Forgot about him. Friends, a lot of times we can be uh, forgotten about. We can be put in in jails without bars by people right and forgotten it's going to be two more years before he gets out of this place but if it wasn't for that place he never would have met the butler and the butler would have never told pharaoh about joseph's ability to interpret dreams friends sometimes our disappointments are actually god's appointments amen if you're taking notes write this one down trusting god means trusting god's timing Trusting God means trusting God's timing. I have found in my own life that God's clock and mine don't work the same. Right? Mine's either running faster than his or slower than his. I find that God's either out front going, Clay, come on, catch up, because I'm dragging my feet, or I'm out in front saying, God, catch up, because I'm running out in front of him. Neither one of those is good, right? <laughs> the third, uh, also, uh, I mean, the third point. Let's move on to, to chapter 41. Any of this making sense, you guys? Okay, cool. Chapter 41, uh, verse 14. 
Our most important opportunities may come when we least expect it. It's been two years since he's interpreted the butler's dream. But look at verse 14 of chapter 41. And Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon. And he shaved, he changed his clothing, and he came to Pharaoh. Our most important opportunities may come when we least expect it. His brothers had, had abandoned him, had rejected him. Potiphar had rejected him. The butler forgot him and rejected him. The world has forgotten and rejected him. But yet, he remained steadfast in his commitment to God. And one day, friends, there's a great spiritual truth. And that is this, that one day can make a tremendous difference. Oh, the difference one day can make. Amen? See, when the world sees oppression, we need to see opportunity. Now he's called before Pharaoh. If he would have got out two years before then, he would have never got this opportunity. If his brothers hadn't have sold him out, he wouldn't be in Egypt. He wouldn't know the land. He wouldn't be able to talk to, to Pharaoh. You see, looking back, we can see God's plan in doing all this stuff. So sometimes our opportunities are when we least expect it. Fourth point, still in chapter 41, verse 15 and 16. Let's read that. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream and there is no one who can interpret it. But I have heard that it said that you can understand a dream to interpret it. Check out verse 16. So Joseph answered Pharaoh and said, Oh, it's not in me. But God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Please notice that. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And I'm going to kind of highlight this. Here's our point. God puts us in a dark world to bring his light. God has put you and I in a dark world to bring forth his light. Joseph was very quick to say, hey, I can't do anything for you, Pharaoh. But I know a God who can give you peace. Skeeter, Lewis, and Bandit were seeking this peace, this treasure. And the captain told him, yeah, you're going on some, some detours. Some crazy things are happening. But there is a God of peace. And his name is Jesus Christ. I've got a great, great scripture. I have this framed and hanging on my wall in my office. It, it, it speaks greatly to me because, friends, I, I was going to say I've never been to prison. I, I've preached in prison, but I've never been a guest. Uh, you know, I've never had health challenges that have been very, very s severe. Okay? I've never, I've never had tragedy like a lot of people here in this room have, have had, but I've had my own pits on my way to the palaces. You, you know what I'm saying? And this verse is great. Would you put it on the overhead, please? Exodus 9, 16. This was, of course, uh, when Moses was doing his thing. God is speaking. God says, but I have raised you up for this very purpose. God is working in your life. E even in the pits, God is working in your life. He's molding you. And here's why. God says, that I might, that I might show you my power and that in my name, that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. See, God is working in you, doing a great thing in you. And he's going to use you to bring light to a very dark world. Isn't that cool? That is awesome. To think that God would use someone like you and I. That's amazing. So Joseph tells the Pharaoh, I can't help you. But I know a God who can bring you peace. Friends, I as a man can't help you. But I know a God who can bring you peace today. The last thing is still in chapter 41, verse 24, drop down. The Pharaoh tells Joseph this incredible dream. And Joseph, of course, through the power of God, tells him what this, this dream is. Check out verse 24. And the thin heads, he's talking about a head of grain that he saw in, uh, in the dream. The thin heads devoured the seven good heads, so I told this to the magicians. These were the people of the world that he first tried to, to get to understand this dream. But notice this. But there was no one who could explain it to me. Here's the fifth point that I'm, I'm going to bring all this together in. And that is, is that you cannot satisfy a spiritual craving with natural things. He said, I needed an answer. So I went to the world. I went to the, the magicians. I went to, uh, you know, I, bu I bought um, 
the inquirer. It didn't tell me. I, I saw a YouTube instruction video. It wouldn't tell me. Right? We, we try all these things of the world and none of them satisfy because only God can give us the answers that we truly seek. We cannot satisfy a spiritual hunger with, with natural food. Does that make sense? You see what I'm saying? And that's why Joseph told him, hey, I can't give you an answer, but I know the God of peace. And friends, today, that same God of peace wants to give you his peace. Remember, go forward in our Bible study here to when King David, before he's, he's King David, he's still a little boy, and the King Saul is at battle. And there's a big monster by the name of Goliath. He's a giant. He's huge. And he's got the whole world afraid. And for 30 days, he comes out morning and night, and he's growling, and he's challenging the, the armies of Israel. And he's, he's saying, bring it on. Let's do this, right? And the world's kind of like that. He's saying, bring it on. Let's see, let's see what we can do, right? And every morning, he would holler and challenge him. Every night, he would holler and challenge him. And friends, maybe today, you've got something nagging on you that the, the first thing when you wake in, up in the morning, that giant is hollering at you. The last thing on your mind before you go to sleep, that giant's hollering at you, right? He's wanting to fight you. He's wanting to, to devour you. He's wanting to kill you, right? Can anyone relate? And here, this army couldn't take on this giant. And here was King Saul. King Saul had a full set of armor and a sword, but he couldn't fight the giant. Why? Because armors and swords are made by men. And here comes David. And what did he have? A rock. Who makes rocks? God makes rocks. What did he kill the giant with? A rock. Friends, we need spiritual things to answer spiritual questions. And many of us are fighting our Goliath with with, with suits of armors that man has made. And you can only go so far. We need the rock, Jesus Christ. Amen. I've got another clip. Cody, if you'll get the lights. Another clip from Friday's session. And uh, this will conclude us in a prayer. No buried treasure? Well, of course there is. But it's found here. Jesus loves and accepts us as we are. God knows us, our deepest thoughts and feelings, and He desires a heart that is seeking Him. When a child's heart trusts in Jesus, that's buried treasure worth more than all the gold lost at sea. High tide coming in, Curtin. Let's take her out, Mr. Avery. Oh, you lot ready to go on a little adventure? So are you ready to go on a little adventure with the one and only Lord Jesus Christ? He's the God of peace. He's the answer you seek. He may have you on a detour, but trust me, he's doing something great in your life. And he wants to continue that. He wants to bring you from your dream to your destiny. Would you stand with me this morning? And Bursa team, would you join me up here? I hope that that made sense and that in some way, even in spite of me, the Lord has spoken to your heart and that through these few minutes we shared, through the videos we shared, through the songs with the children that, that we shared, that, that God has kind of tapped on your heart a little bit and that today you've seen that, that you know, I might be in a pit but God's got the palace for me. I've got a dream, but I've realized today it's a small dream, and God's got a huge dream for me, right? Maybe today you've recognized that you're trying to, to fulfill a, a, a void in your heart with the things of the world, like Pharaoh tried with the magicians, like Saul tried with armor, and God has got your answer. Maybe you're facing rejection. Rejection is the worst pain I believe Satan can throw on a person. Maybe you're struggling in, in body with a physical need. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a job. Maybe it's fun. It could be anything. The answer you're looking for is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray, and then after I pray, we're going to open up the altars for prayer, and we're going to give you an opportunity to respond to this great and awesome God we've been talking about. So would you bow your hearts and heads with me in prayer? Father, we do thank you for your goodness and your love. Father, I thank you for this brief time that we had together today. But Lord, how strong your word is. Lord, I pray that today encouragement would be received by everybody. Lord, I pray for those who might find themselves in the pit, for those who might find themselves struggling on, on the detour trying to get to their destiny, Lord. Father, I pray that if there's anyone here today desperately seeking and needing the peace that only you can give, I pray that today their eyes would be open to their need for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, whatever needs might be presented today, I know that you have the answer. So we lay them all at your feet. And Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. What we do, what our custom here at Lighthouse is, is after I've said the prayer after our Bible study, the worship team's going to sing a song, and what we're doing now is we're going to open up the altars for prayer. Uh, my wife joins me, a couple of the fellas join me up front, and we just invite you to be in an attitude of reverence and worship, uh, but if you need prayer, we invite you to come forward, and we'd love to pray with you and for you. And today, if, if you realize your need